today we're going to be talking about how to use the net change theorem to evaluate an integral. And in this particular problem, we've been given the integral of x times the third root of x plus the fourth root of x, and we've been asked to evaluate it on the range 0 to 1. So our limits of integration are 0 and 1. Now the net change theorem, or the NCT if you want to call it that, says that the integral of a rate of change is the net change, and it gives you this theorem right here. And basically what this means, and we need to remember that taking the derivative and taking the integral are opposite actions, and that factors into this theorem. This theorem is also really similar to the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. But what this says is that if we have an original function, f of x, so capital F of x here is our original function, and its derivative therefore is f prime of x. Its derivative is f prime of x. So this theorem says if we take the integral of the derivative, in other words, if we start with the derivative and we take the integral or the antiderivative, that means we're going to get back here to our original function. So the integral of the derivative is just the original function itself. So we get back capital F of x. Now if we evaluate that on the interval a to b, what we get here is f of b minus f of a, because when we have limits of integration like this, we always plug in the top number first, so we would take f of b, and then we subtract whatever we get when we plug in the bottom number. So this tells us that the net change of the function, the original function, is f of b minus f of a. And you can think about it this way. So if we had, for example, let's take a really small graph here, if our function is defined, for example, ours is from 0 to 1, right? So if you call this the origin 0 and this point here 1, so if our function happened to look like this, and it doesn't, but if it looked like this from 0 to 1, if this were our original function, capital F of x, then f of b means f of the upper limit of integration. f of b is this point right here, the value of the function right there f of a is f of our lower limit of integration, 0, so the value of the function at this point. So we're basically saying, if we say here that this is at 1 and this is at 2 along the y-axis, then we're saying the value of the function at b here, this is a and b, the value of the function at b is 2, the value of the function at a is 1, so we'd get 2 minus 1, and that would be 1. Net change would be 1. and That makes sense because here, the value here and the value here, it's this distance here from 2 to 1 is the net change of the function on the range 0 to 1. So that's really all it's saying is you're finding the net change here. It's really just as simple as evaluating the original function at these two points, the upper and lower limit of integration, and finding the, the difference between them. So if we want to use net change here, basically we're just going to be evaluating the definite integral as we would any other integral. We're pretending here that this function is f prime of x, it's the derivative of the original function, so we need to find its integral to get our original function, capital F of x. So we'll evaluate the integral. Before we do, we'll go ahead and simplify it. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x times x to the 1 3rd power is the same as the third root of x, plus x to the 1 4th power, which is the same as the fourth root of x, dx. Now we'll distribute that x and we'll get x, this is x to the first, x to the first times x to the 1 3rd, you add the exponents together, 1 plus 1 3rd is 4 thirds, so we'll get x to the 4 thirds, then x to the 1 times x to the 1 fourth, 1 plus 1 fourth is 5 fourths, so x to the 5 fourths dx, then when we evaluate we'll add 1 to the exponent, so 4 thirds plus 1, in other words, 4 thirds plus 3 thirds is 7 thirds, so we get 3 sevenths x to the 7 thirds, plus, again here, adding 1 or adding 4 fourths gives us 9 fourths, so then we get plus 4 ninths x to the 9 fourths, and we're evaluating this whole thing on the interval 0 to 1. So this, what we've just found inside the brackets now, this is capital F of x. It's our original function because we started with f prime of x, the derivative. We took the integral, so now this is our original function. Now we need to evaluate the original function 
at B and A, right? So we're going to evaluate it at B, and then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in A. So we'll evaluate it at B, we'll plug in 1. So 3 sevenths times 1 to the 7 thirds, 1 raised to the 7 thirds is still 1. So we'll get 3 sevenths times 1 plus 4 ninths times 1, so just 4 ninths. And then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0. Of course, when we plug in 0 to both of these, we'll get 0, so there's no need to write it out. When we find a common denominator here of 63, we'll multiply this first fraction by 9 ninths, and we'll get 27 over 63. We'll multiply the second fraction by 7 over 7, and we'll get 28 over 63. When we add those together, we'll get 55 over 63 which is an irreducible fraction, and that is our net change. So in other words, our function must have looked something like this without giving any detail to what the function itself looked like. The function went up by 55 over 63. So the value here at one, if this is one and this is zero, because our limits of integration were one and zero, when we plugged in one, we got 55 over 63. When we plugged in 0, we got 0, which is why this here is at the origin. So 55 over 63 minus 0 gives us 55 over 63, which is the net change, the difference between here and here, the net change in our function. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.